um, discussion to have, especially during um, Pride Month. And we're really excited to be able to have it today um, with, with this group of people. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. Um, on behalf of CIM's Diversity and Inclusion Advisory Committee, um, we wanted to, uh, to begin by acknowledging that I am on the traditional unceded territory of, um, oops, sorry. Uh, oh no, I lost my land acknowledgement. Well, it's the Squamish. I'm so sorry, you guys. Yeah, it's I'm okay. So, so it's, it's the Squamish, <laughs> Tsleil-Waututh and Muskegon First Nations, so the Coast Muskegon Salish people. First Nations, yes. And so, so those of us that are in Vancouver um, do acknowledge that um, there are others from other areas of the country today. Um, so we acknowledge that there are other, um, other, other unceded territories as well um, that people are sitting in today. Um, so as we get started, I did have a couple of slides today, but as you can tell, we are having a, a little bit of um, technical issues, but um, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about our diversity and inclusion advisory committee uh, within CIM. Um, so our collective purpose uh, of, of DIAC is, is truly to promote, educate, and support diversity, equity, and inclusion within CIM and the mining industry at large. Um, so diversity encompasses all persons in, inclusive of age, gender, um, sex, race, uh, creed, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or physical abilities, and more. Um, so we have assembled a strong, uh, strong team and diverse team um, of leaders that are committed to uh, delivering on our purpose. Um, so with that, um, there are multiple work streams within the DIAC committee. Um, there's uh, one for, so as an example, Lori uh, is our lead for affinity groups and external relations and partnerships. Um, we have a lead uh, for indigenous relations. We have a lead for women. We have a lead for 2SLGBTQ uh, plus, and sorry, uh, Lori, I said that you're the lead for affinity groups, but you're the lead for 2SLGBTQ plus. Um, yeah, and then we do. have to leave for neurodiversity as well. Um, so if there are any, if any of those topics are interesting to you um, and, and you have a passion in any of those areas, we're always looking for extra help and volunteers. Um, we do uh, educational webinars such as this, but we're also looking at um, putting together more in-person events um, connected um, sometimes with CIM conference, with other conferences, and, and gatherings um, where a lot of CIM members would be attending. Um, so please uh, reach out to um, uh, myself, Katie, Mary Lou um, uh, on the organizing committee, Lori. Um, don't hesitate to reach out to any one of us. Connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, speaking of LinkedIn, just a quick plug and shout out for our DIAC LinkedIn uh, page. If you don't already follow and like that page, please do, um, because that's where you'll hear about um, all of the latest uh, in, in, in that news uh, and, and keep up to date with what we're doing. Um, so with all that being said, I would like to introduce our moderator for today's uh, conversation. Um, that would be, and I just want to, I don't believe I started recording, perhaps, um, it's being recorded. No, you you did because it is it is, uh, there, was, okay. there, there, there was a message Thank yet. You. Thanks, Katie. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, so, uh, Lori has almost 30 years of experience in the mining industry and research operations and consulting roles. He graduated with a degree in mineral processing, sorry, mineral process engineering from University of Queensland and an MBA 
uh, from the University of California at Berkeley. His roles in Outback Australia included uh, manager and metallurgy, uh, man manager of metallurgy at Century Mine. Since 2016, Lori has led Resourceful Paths, a Vancouver, a Vancouver based engineering and sustainability consulting firm focused on responsible mining practices. He is a member of CIM's Diversity and Inclusion Advisory Committee, DIAC. And as a gay member of CIM's diversity, or sorry, and as a gay member, helps facilitate uh, activities to support 2SL GBTQ plus community and its allies. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Lori and our awesome panelists uh, for a discussion today. All right, thanks very much, Katie, and happy Pride Month, everyone. Um, so I'm also joining from Vancouver. Um, and um, without further ado, I'd like to basically get started and uh, have the uh, panelists uh, introduce themselves. Uh, so we'll start first with Ebony Clark. Uh, if you want to just say a few words, uh, if you want to share a fun fact, um, where, you, where you're calling in from today, etc. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon if you're over on the East Coast. Um, my name is Ebony. Uh, I work in a mining practice here at Deloitte. Uh, I live on Vancouver Island with my wife and my two-year-old daughter. Uh, fun fact, perhaps, is uh, she turned two yesterday, which is uh, which is very exciting. We we made it to two years, uh, which is which is great. Um, at Deloitte, so I wear a couple of hats within the firm, uh, but one of them is that I am our BC Pride ERG leader here. Uh, so very active, uh, along with an amazing group of, of committee members hosting events and panels and community volunteering and, and other um, activities here to really with the purpose of helping our practitioners feel safe and, and welcome to be themselves at work, as well as helping to uh, and, and doing that through events for them, events and learning opportunities for allies, as well as making sure that we are making an impact in our in our community as well. Um, prior to Deloitte, so um, also from, from Australia here and uh, worked in both the environment team and the mining operations teams for BHP back in uh, back in Australia, so over on, in Western Australia, um, Perth and the Pilbara uh, for, for the iron ore asset and then uh, over on the east coast in Brisbane for the coal asset. Um, working in, in mining operations, you know, I was 25 years old at the time um, and, and the first female supervisor for the oldest mine site for BHP, um, Mount Whaleback. And not only was I, you know, first female there and, and, and a pretty small um, uh, group of women in operations, but I was also certainly the, the only out queer person um, within, within the team. And, you know, I'm here today and I'm, you know, I, I have my day job, but, with, but with, within Deloitte, we also talk about having a, a gay job. Um, and my gay job really is just about, you know, trying to help change that, especially within the mining industry, um, by just being visible, by being out, by having the uncomfortable conversations and actively supporting, you know, our marginalized folks. So super excited to, to be here today and have a great discussion with, uh, with, with the other panelists. Fantastic, Ebony, and um, you know, I always love hearing those stories about uh, groundbreakers like yourself. So good on you, um, and um, uh, great to have you on the call today. Uh, so next, we're going to turn to Caden Pierce. Sorry, I had to find the unmute. Hi, right. uh, so I'm Caden Pierce. Um, I'm calling in from Montreal. Uh, I'm here working at a very small consultant firm. Um, just as of like a, a month ago or so, as I just finished my master's degree here at McGill. Um, previously, I have worked at a copper and gold mine out in BC and also up in the oil sands in Fort McMurray um, and a couple different mines there. Um, you know, it's a, where I'm working now, it's a very small firm, so we don't really have much need of anything to do with uh, you know, ERG, there's only three of us, so <laughs> pretty close here. Um, but in previous situations, and especially in BC, as um, like uh, my position on the LGBT spectrum is I am uh, transgender and uh, just queer in general besides that. Um, so the most pressing thing for me is that I actually transitioned at work while I was in BC at like a fly and fly out mine. So that was uh, pretty 
interesting to be a part of and for the most part uh, actually went better than I expected. So I'm sure we'll get into that later. Um, but uh, yeah, for the most part, like it's, 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 it's been a journey and it's actually been rather quick. I've only been transitioned for about four and a half years. So most of my career experience is since then in those last few years. So um, there's quite a bit there. If anybody has any questions, I'm an open book. Uh, anything you want to know, I'm here to help with. Thanks very much, Caden. I just wanted to share how Caden and I met. Um, so last year we had uh, a really awesome uh, panel uh, for two SLGBTQI plus people in the mining industry at the uh, the end of uh, CIM uh, convention in Montreal. And Caden actually, um, uh, you know, at the end uh, shared uh, his um, uh, like his a little bit about his journey transitioning in the in the mining industry, which uh, I, I really was very thankful for, Caden. I think it was quite a moment. Um, and I think, uh, um, you know, we had a really quite an amazing panel, but that that really kind of, um, I think, created uh, a sense of um, energy in the room, if I can put it that way, a quiet uh, energy in the room. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that was really good. Um, so I, I want to thank you for, for doing that and uh, for being back here with us today. So um, now next we're going to go to Lucy Cotter from uh, Jacobs. So Lucy. Thanks, Larry. Uh, Lucy Cutter. I'm in the Vancouver area. And um, yeah, I work for Jacobs. So it's a large engineering company, 60,000 people worldwide. Um, I'm mostly working, uh, I've been working for 20 years as a chemical engineer. Now I mostly work in wastewater treatment, but I have a few connections to the mining industry. I worked in New Caledonia, um, just off the coast of Australia and some big nickel mines. Um, and I also have done some wastewater for some mines in Laos, um, in South Asia there, Southeast Asia. Um, yeah. And so I am, I guess I connected with Laurie through the LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce. Um, so Jacobs has a, um, social value and equity program and I'm the lead in Canada and, uh, yeah, we're really trying to support LGBTQ, um, uh, businesses on, on the business side. And I guess personally, I'd like to think of myself as an ally. So um, yeah, here today to kind of um, share that, share that point of view. Yeah. Thanks very much, Lucy. And I really enjoyed being on the uh, panel with uh, CGLCC uh, the other week. Uh, so it's, that stands for the Canadian Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. And I actually have my business certified uh, with CGLCC and, um, and certainly um, I think um we were talking in the lead up to this about how we um, determine, you know, whether you're an ally or not. Well, I, I said to Lucy, you know, the fact that you were there on a panel uh, with this organisation, CGLCC, made it very clear that you were absolutely an ally. Um, that that sort of really gave you, I think, that standing. And and we had a really good conversation. I want to thank you for that and for being here again today. Um, so, uh, uh, okay, so we're going to dive in a little bit and we're going to talk uh, a little bit about pride. pride um, and before we sort of uh, start the conversation. I just wanted to share my screen. Uh, let's see if this technology works. Um, and I'm going to go to my little PowerPoint slides here and set them up here. Um, okay, so is that coming up okay? Can everyone see some photos? Yep. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so um, many of you will know this, but um, for those that don't, uh, Pride started really as a, a riot at the Stonewall Inn on Christopher Street in New York. And uh, I was uh, lucky enough to be on a trade mission with CGLCC in New York uh, earlier this year. And I thought I'd just capture uh, some moments, not because I knew there was a webinar on Pride Month coming up, but just because I wanted to capture that moment and 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 this you know very special place for our movement. Um, and, uh, you know, I think um, there's a little bit of, uh, there's a plaque there that describes the, the events. Um, it was quite, um, uh, quite a big deal when they had the riots because the police basically raided this, um, this, uh, this club and um, and people, rather than just backing down and being intimidated, they decided to fight back. So, um, you know, there's a statement here on the on the wall of the Stonewall Inn, um, uh, and I'll just sort of read it to make sure I get it right. In the name of those who came before me, I pledge to be brave, to be true to myself and to fight like, fight like hell for equality, uh, which I think pretty much sums it up because certainly in those days it was a big fight and that continues to, to this day. So just wanted to share that. Um, and I might just stop sharing now and ask each of the panelists maybe to say a couple of words about what does pride mean to you? 
Um, so we might just start, we'll just go in the same order uh, for now. Uh, Ebony, would you like to say a couple of words about that? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's a it's a really interesting question. And and since um, you know, being asked to be on this panel and, I, and I'm asked it a little bit as well, I think it, it changes for me depending on what's what's going on even in, in my life, right? And, and so um, I know recently very top of mind for me when I think about why is pride important and what it means for me. Uh, I think there are two very recent examples, uh, one from my personal life and then one from um well, probably both, both from a personal perspective, but um, you know, I, I live here on Vancouver Island, and uh, and only two weekends ago we had an anti-trans movement, an anti-trans event um, being hosted in our local community center, and it was really um, it was really large in the in the community. It really rocked a lot of people, and when we think about uh, you know the local community center flying a pride flag. Uh, as of the start of this month, but then unfortunately not having these policies in place that uh, promote safe spaces and the ability to choose who can hold events. Um, they didn't have a way to stand up, unfortunately, and they they had to host this event. So we had a bit of a um, you know, supportive uh, protest in, in a way, you know, a safe protest where we just came out and uh, and, and supported all of our, our, uh, our trans community, many of which are, are the youth in, within the town, right? And so I look at that and I think this is exactly why we still need pride because we need to be highlighting um, that, you know, that truly the dangers of these type of events being held and this this uh, this anti-trans rhetoric, which certainly is, uh, is you know, we're seeing more and more of it across, across the country and across North America. So that's one of the ones from a couple of weeks ago. And then, you know, I'd say from a from an even more personal side of things, um, you know, pride for me is is super important. We we had to take take my daughter to uh to the emergency room a couple of months ago and you know, we got to the we got to the front of the hospital and you know, you, you start to check in and my wife was holding our daughter and uh, you know, she was like, Yep, I'm a mum, we're talking about these things, and then the nurse looked at me and said, Oh, and it, are you a friend? I was like, well, <laughs> No, absolutely not. And it's in these really stressful environments, right? Our daughter was really sick. We didn't know what was going on and, and all of that. And um, and then, you know, I said no, and I'm her mom too. And then you shift down a couple of stalls to the next nurse who then takes all of your details. And then same thing happened. And she looked at my wife and said, Great, like you're the mom, like here's your details. And she said, And so are you a, an emergency contact? And it's just, you know. It, it's really tough, you know, so so those are the types of things where I'm like visibility matters, uh, representation matters, and the more that we can be showcasing that there are different families out there, um, I think, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, I think it's super important. It's, it's hurtful. It's, it doesn't make you feel welcome at all in those types of situations. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, I've always got a long list. Everyone, I think, within the queer community has got a long list of uh, situations, but those are two that are very fresh in my mind, uh, let's say, from uh, from that perspective, when I think about why I'm marching in our local Pride event uh, this Sunday. We are a, I, I'm super proud to uh, to say that Deloitte in, uh, in BC here is a silver sponsor of Vancouver Pride this year, which is also the national Pride event for, uh, for Canada. And yeah, we do that because it's, it's important to show everybody that yeah, look, thanks very much for sharing that. And, um, you know, I, I sort of, in a way, these uh, these sort of anecdotes you say, there's a certain, um, uh, I, I don't know how to, how to describe it. I mean, it's, it's, it's tiresome. Um, mm -hmm. In a way, it's kind of amusing in a sort of, um, uh, in an uh, uncomfortable way. Um, Amusing is not really the right word, but, um, you know, I mean, you know, come on, we should, yeah, we live in a very progressive country in a very progressive province. Like people should not be surprised if they see, uh, uh, you know, two same-sex parents in that setting and they shouldn't really be making those assumptions. So I'm, I'm sorry that you went through that. Um, that's still the reality, of course. I think some people have biases and they can't really see it. But um, thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you for sharing and standing up for, um, you know, all aspects of our community. Um, I think that's great. And that's another aspect of allyship that I think um, is really, really important. We've got to support each other because our, our community is not monolithic. Um, 
So um, just want to thank you for that and uh, and good uh, good stuff uh, being involved with um, uh, participation in in the upcoming uh, prides, uh, both uh, you know your local one and Vancouver. That's that's awesome. Okay, so Caden, we're going to go to you. Um, what does pride mean to you? Sure. Um, what pride means to you? I mean, Ebony did uh, talk about it a bit, and like uh, representation and visibility matters so much, especially in the mining community. Like, I can't tell you like or count how many times, especially when I was at uh, at the gold mine in BC, how many times like just random people who I didn't expect would come up to me and start talking about um, LGBT and like that they were part of the community and stuff uh, like that or like their their kid was having trouble or like gender issues or sexuality issues and they were talking to me about it at work. So like, it's not even just the people at work who are part of the community, it's like their parents or their siblings or whatever as well. And being visible, I got to see a lot of that. And I guess pride for me is creating that space where the community as a whole is more visible and hopefully in a more positive light um, because with the rise of, um, you know, especially like anti-trans, anti-LGBT, uh, rhetoric and fear mongering right now like you can't meet fear with anger you have to meet fear with like gentleness and explanations basically which I know is uncomfortable for a lot of people in our community that have been targeted um, but for people who have that bandwidth um, they should really try because the amount of people I was able to talk to and like freaked out parents and I was able to you know calm them down and you know, understand a bit more. Um, I think that really helped and got them on board with, you know, who we are and like to, to not be afraid. And the more we can do that and the more we can reach out and be visible, like the more we can, um, you know, move forward together without this nastiness that's been spreading. So pride is about keeping that going. Yeah. Yeah, it's certainly some of it is pretty nasty and um, completely unacceptable. Um, you know, when we talk about um, uh, hate speech and so forth, I mean, that's exactly what it is. I think there's, I think coming back to some of Ebony's points, there's a certain level of ignorance and so forth, but um, there's also this next level, which is really uh, hurtful hate. Um, so thank you for standing up and, and you know, for sharing about that journey and just taking it in your stride. I think it's amazing. And I might just sort of maybe um, put a spin on what you're saying about how you meet fear. Um, one way perhaps is to think about meeting fear with curiosity. Um, and, and in some ways, you know, curiosity about why are you so scared of, you know, dot, dot, dot. Um, because people are just trying to get on with their lives and leave, leading their awesome lives. And, and I think we've got some awesome panellists, for example, doing exactly that. And I think it's fantastic. And so sometimes I, 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 I've had moments in my life where, um, you know, people have actually done that. Um, you know, we've had a conversation that's been a bit more exploratory, curious, et cetera, rather than driven from fear and, and so forth. Um, but I love what you said there about visibility as well. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll come back to that topic of visibility a little bit because uh, some of us, you know, at times can choose to hide if we want um, uh, in certain circumstances. Some of our community is not that visible, but we'll come back to that. So um, uh, we'll flip to uh, Lucy. What does pride mean to you? Thanks, Lori. Um, yeah, really great to hear from Ken and Ebony. That um, makes me think a bit more. Like I, my initial reaction is that it's a party and a celebration. And I think I shared some photos with you from, I had to go back to 2010 for the last time that I was yep. at um, Pride and with some friends, gay friends and my sister who was living with me and uh, my boyfriend, who's now my husband. And we've all got kids now, but it was really like a celebration. And I, I appreciate that. Um, it, it, there were a lot of beautiful people there. There were also like a big range of people. And I think that is um, really important to see. It's not one thing. It's it's a very diverse community. And I really enjoyed um, that aspect. But I guess now, like I have kids, little kids, six and four years old, and, um, and my gay friends have kids and growing up, like, I'm kind of hopeful in a way, um, you know, my son asked if he could have two dads, um, like our friends. And, uh, and so that kind of gives me hope that like the next generation, maybe, you know, don't see differences. They just see the fun things or the, you know, benefits of having gay parents. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of hopeful. Um, 
I also see a change in the engineering field, like talking to other engineers I often ask about their kids or how old are their kids, what stage of school they're in. And um, I have come across a couple, at least two uh, engineers in Canada who have trans kids and quite open to talk about their experiences, um, how their families are reacting, what's going well, what's challenges um, with grandparents and older generations. Um, so I'm also quite hopeful about changes in the engineering field that um, through kind of lived experiences, people are growing and, you know, being curious and, and having more experiences, I guess, with the LGBTQ plus community. And, um, you know, you, I, I think there is change and yeah, there's hope, I think, for, um, for people to be less fearful, more educated, more curious. So yeah, that's my experience. Well, thanks for sharing that and lovely little anecdote about um, a kid who wants two dads. Um, that's that's kind of awesome. It's really it warms my heart. Um, and um, um, and I think um, what I'd like to do now is just go back to the photos for a second. But before I do that, um, uh, if people have questions, just put them in the chat, and I will queue to Katie uh, in a, in a few minutes just to see if anyone's got any questions. But feel free, and we can answer some of those as we go along. But right now, I just want to go back to some of those photos. Um, and we'll do that both uh, in terms of uh, some pride events that we've uh, respectively been to and uh, and also maybe to talk about some of those um, aspects of pride. So I want to go back to Amsterdam Pride 2014, which is really the favourite pride event I've attended. It was fantastic. I happened to be there um, by accident in a way. I'd planned my itinerary and then it was like Amsterdam Pride and then I was like, oh, yeah. Um, I was actually born in the Netherlands, so I was a little bit, um, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, it was close to my heart. So we talked about parties. So this is some of the images you might see, people in various, uh, you know, flashy costumes, a lot of pink. Uh, here's some awesome women being boxers um, and lots of, uh, you know, drag queens and, and fancy um, outfits and all that sort of stuff. In this case, on a canal with lots of people. We talk about the corporatization of pride, which I think, you know, sometimes can be a bit of a double-edged sword. I think... Um, it's very important, I think, that we've got mainstream companies supporting these events. But I think there has been some views in the community that, you know, we don't want the um, the essence of pride to become too corporate. But now here's an example of, you know, corporate um, uh, engagement. Uh, there's always a serious aspect to pride. And you just got to really look out for it. So in 2014, uh, for those that remember, um, there was a, uh, a play in the Malaysian Airlines plane, MH17, that was shot down over Ukraine. Um, uh, in that early part of the war. And um, there were a, a bunch of researchers from the Netherlands uh, going to an AIDS conference in Melbourne, in Australia. And so we, we lost a huge number of people who were really advancing the cause of, um, of treatment and, and working towards a cure for, uh, for uh, AIDS. And so this was a memorial to that. It was a sad moment and I bore my eyes out when, when this boat came through. But um, there was a lot of Australians died on that plane as well. So one aspect of the serious nature of pride. Um, and then, uh, you know, I was looking over and uh, there was this, um, uh, this bridge and there's these some words on the bridge. And I was sort of reading it in my very crappy, uh, you know, Dutch that when I was a kid. Um, and then uh, this boat came along with the same um, message. And then I sort of read it and I could sort of understand it. So in Dutch, it says homosexuality, the stuff bar in Sesson Saved in London. Uh, it is not fail for to theft and theft may. So what that means in English is homosexuality is banned in 76 countries. There's still much to fight for, fight along. Um, and it was like, to me, that really captured in, in a few words, uh, a really important message. And, you know, maybe the number now is not quite 76, but in some countries, you know, there has been some uh, relaxation, like uh, uh, same-sex marriage has just been announced uh, legally in, in Thailand. In other places, in Africa, for example, uh, restrictions uh, have been accelerating. And now you've got, um, you know, threats um, of, uh, you know, basically execution of some people in our community for being themselves. So... You know, this remains a very serious issue throughout the world. Um, and uh, when you go to pride parades, there is always a human rights ele element. And, and here, for example, was a float that talked about some of these countries where, you know, our community is essentially either harassed or under threat of their life or their livelihoods or uh, everything. Um, and this is a real issue for the mining industry because you, you think about uh, international companies 
uh, based in, say, Canada or Australia, who have operations in places where it's not legal to be, um, you know, anywhere on the spectrum of LGBTQ+. Plus. Um, and, and that's really serious, like places like Papua New Guinea, places like Ghana, um, various countries in Africa, um, uh, India, Malaysia. I mean, um, it's, it's still a very serious issue. And so we've got this tension really around we want visibility, but we also got to recognise there are places in the world where it's simply not safe. And it's very relevant to our industry. Um, but I want to turn uh, to some photos from uh, you, Ebony. Um, so do you want to say a couple of words about these photos? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, so I mentioned in my introduction. So, I was um, I was working with BHP there quite quite some time ago now. It it feels, but uh, as part of that, so BHP was a sponsor or a partner of uh, Pride Pride and Diversity, which is an organisation uh, back in Australia. And as part of that, um, they were able to invite a, a number of folks to uh walk or dance as you can see on the right hand side uh in the sydney mardi gras uh so i got tapped on the shoulder for that which was pretty incredible you know living over in uh in the pilbara and getting flown to sydney to uh to do that and so this left hand side picture is a, a group of us who was all who were all selected from uh various assets or uh, parts of parts of the bhp company and then on the right hand side, um, that's us all all dancing. And so that that meant a lot to me. And as I mentioned before, about being part of the EIG within Deloitte now, you know, I think about how included and how kind of safe and recognized I was by being not only selected to, to go in and do this, but just to show that commitment or to see that commitment from BHP. Uh, to be doing this and to be putting, you know, money where their mouth is around saying that, um, you know, they're inclusive of the LGBT um, plus community. So this was fantastic. Um, I'm, I still chat with quite a few of the folks um, who were in that photo as well. It was actually quite nice when I was digging up the photo uh, of this in my social media. And I look at it and I say, yeah, I've, I've developed really great relationships and friendships with um, with this team of people that um, one of the women there right in the middle with the glasses um, became my boss at my next at my next job and so you know once you know people within that community it's just it just helps along the way and you know I have uh, I I have you know when I've had tough times in in terms of my career and you know whether it's been harassment or otherwise you know I, I know I have a safe group of people that I could rely on and chat to about it so yeah, representation matters. This type of symbolism of um, active allyship, I think, is super important. And yeah, it's always been a, a highlight of my career. At BHP was being able to represent them and myself uh, in that in that dance in that march. That's absolutely amazing and, and pretty groundbreaking because I know the uh, the mining industry has not always been seen as uh, so progressive. When I went to my first Mardi Gras in 2000, I lived in the outback of New South Wales and I, I, I told people I was going to Sydney um, and uh, came back and wasn't really ready at that point because I was still in the closet. And um, it was an extremely uncomfortable experience for the next year because uh, I would have various forms of snickering and mm -hmm. uh, you know undercurrent of stuff. And then uh, to some uh, tradesmen coming to my office and screaming right next to my face about all sorts of, yeah, F words and things uh, that I won't say here. Um, but, um, you know, so so good to hear that uh, that transition to um, uh, an inclusive and supportive, um, um, you know, corporate initiative like this that got you bonded with people. And I see the hard hat. I, saw, I, I was looking at the photo. I thought I'd see a hard hat in that photo. Like this. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's kind of awesome. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I will say, like, just to, just to add to that as well, I mean, this, this, this was an incredible experience. But to, to your point, Laurie, I mean, you know, I had to let my colleagues know that I was going to be away for, you know, three days or something, right, fly over to yeah. Sydney and then, and then come back. And it was met with, you know, similar similar feedback that you had maybe not as aggressive there but you know where's yeah. where's my where's my flights and accommodation oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to, yeah, to yeah, go yeah, have a party yeah. for being sure. safe and <laughs> yeah all all of that stuff so this there was still that but it was also you know a teaching a teachable moment for those people as well and I was able to open up and talk about why this is important and that was you know, almost 10 years ago maybe a little bit more actually now but um yeah, it's it's complex, but it's why we just need to keep showing up. 
yeah, and, and coming back to Caden's earlier point about visibility really matters. Uh, thanks for sharing that. And I I'll always have wonderful memories of Sydney in Australia. Um, I do miss home. Um, anyway, uh, we're going to flip to Vancouver and uh, we've got a few photos uh, here uh, that you provided, uh, Lucy. So you want to talk to these maybe a little bit, please? Yeah, thanks, sorry. Um, I had to go, yeah, pretty far back to 2010. Um, yeah, these are two of my gay friends and my sister in blue there. The only one I could find with me is this this one over here on the side with me in the yellow T-shirt. Um, I think I was taking the photos, but yeah, we had a great time. A lot of Pride events we went to that year. Um, one of these guys is uh, a colleague of mine in engineering and he started, we were at a smaller engineering firm back then and um, he started just after me and yeah, we were kind of instant friends um, and he was, I think he was a little bit nervous about being out in engineering um, yep. straight away, but uh, he made a decision that he wanted to be, and this was what he was going to do when he moved to Vancouver. So, um, and he was he was already out to his family as well. Uh, but yeah, I, th I was really proud of like that firm, a small engineering firm. Uh, nobody really, there was not a word about it. It was just kind of that was accepted, and it was that you know that's who he is, and. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, these guys are like family to me. <laughs> um, we've all had kids and growing up and so we still, yeah, catch up quite regularly. And um, it just reminds me of a very fun time in my life. Um, and my now husband with a balloon attached to his head over there, um, we were kind of just dating. And I I think it was kind of eye-opening for me about him that he also, you know, just enjoyed himself and was not at all bothered by, you know, anyone, you know, um uh talking to him or uh yeah like kind of I I guess that stereotype of the hetero male is that they might you know yep. be afraid of gay men or advances yeah. or um yeah. yeah and he kind of yeah didn't didn't uh, blink an eye so I think that was a good sign that he was gonna work out as my husband yeah um, that's uh that's that's quite amazing I mean uh, for yeah. people to feel secure I guess um, I mean I think that's a really yeah. key part of allyship in our community um, and you, you talked a little bit about that, I might just say a couple of words. Um, you know, I think one of the things you described there about you being comfortable, your future husband being comfortable, et cetera. I mean, that's a real key component of allyship because if you, if you can't get yourself comfortable about stuff, you can't really be an ally because, you know, you, you're so up in your head about, oh, you know, you know, all the fears and stuff you have, you're in no place to support a, a marginalised group if that's if you're that headspace. So, so fantastic to hear that. Yeah. Um, any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I was just at Larry, like something you said the other day, like about also not putting mental load. Like I've never asked my friends yep. like what they do in the bedroom or like anything about yep. their kind of personal life. I just, they're my friends and we interact as such. So I, I try not to, yeah, I, I think that is something that I don't do is, you know, put any mental load on them to try and explain the community or be, you know, responsible for everybody. So, um, yeah, we're just, we're just friends and we interact on that level, talk about it, diapers and kids and, you know, little yeah. kind of parenting things that um, we have in common. Um, yeah. Thanks so much, Lucy. Um, and uh, Caden and I were also communicating. We only managed to, uh, get one slide on the uh, on the uh, on the slide deck but um Caden I'd love to hear about Montreal Pride um, love Montreal uh, but uh, maybe share a little bit about this and, and and your experiences there and other pride events you you'd like to share about uh, ironically so that that one is from last year here in Montreal okay and that one was actually super disappointing <laughs> oh okay yeah the the other photos uh, that I uh, sent you, Unfortunately, they didn't make it in. It was kind of like pride that I did through the years. And the first one uh, that I ha had on there, or the first two were actually like uh, me pre-transition. And one of them was in uh, Edmonton. And that one was actually fantastic. It was back in 2017, had a great time. Um, and then the other one was in Seattle, which was uh, the year before I transitioned. So that one I think was in 2018 and uh, 2019. I don't remember anymore. Um, uh, and, and those ones were a lot of fun. It was nice and sunny. People had a great time. There's a lot of people out, a bunch of different um, companies and communities and groups and all, all sorts of things. It was really great. And then the last one, the most recent, aside from the Montreal one, 
It was actually when I went to Edinburgh in uh, 2021. And that was really, really cool. I was part of the parade that it wasn't, uh, it's not as commercialized there. So it's all the people go and they march together uh, through. And then, you know, you end up in bars or whatever afterwards. And that was, um, that was also a really good time. And that was like uh, the first time when I was like out and transitioned. And I was also in Edinburgh, which was really cool. Uh, so all these different experiences that, I, that I've had. And uh, for the most part, it's all, it, it, it's fun. It's a good day. That one in Montreal, they actually, the best part of it, ironically, was before the parade started going by, was there was a, a group and they had like this crazy bubble machine. And then all the kids were like running through all the bubbles and they were like going up uh, in, into the buildings that were there behind. And it was, uh, people were kind of like, dancing together and somebody had like music playing so it was like a a little party and then all the all the um the floats and people started marching by so yeah that's kind of a cute story yeah um <laughs> and um uh, look thanks for sharing that sorry um I'll, I'll see if i can flip to the the other photos before we we break um but uh thank you for sharing that and um you know it's really nice to hear um you know how you describe that that really feel good feeling um uh you know you know, as you're talking, it really feels like, you know, um, you, you, you have some bonds there and so forth to, uh, to these sort of events. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, so I just want to check in, Katie, uh, are there any Q&As uh, so far? We've got a little bit more to chat about, but if there's any uh, questions come through yet. Yeah, absolutely. So Amy, first of all, said these events are great for knowledge and inclusivity. I do have to drop for a previously scheduled call. Here's hoping when we know better, we do better. And Mary Jane asked, does the panel have any uh, tips or suggestions for managers wanting to be stronger allies? Okay, I'm just trying to get rid of, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second here. Um, and um, uh, maybe flip to you first on the ally question there, uh, Lucy. Sure, I'll give it a shot. Um, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure what makes a good ally. I guess as a manager, like being open to having conversations and um, being curious, like Laurie said, uh, we have like a really big ERG um, system groups in Jacob. So there's kind of tens of thousands of employees in, in our eight ERGs and one called PRISM is, um, there to support LGBTQ plus uh, employees and really promote them. So they've got some, uh, I guess, yeah, it's it's easier in a big company in a way that there's um, there's kind of that uh, lobbying for um, LGBTQ plus employees to be um, considered for promotions and um, kind of mentor, there's mentoring groups um, to get mentored by more senior managers. So. I guess if there's a way managers could get involved in things like that, um, might be good. Um, what else do they do? Yeah, the, the ERG is really good in a way. I think there's some positive things about um, just promoting events. And so any employees can come along and just learn a bit more um, about Pride or about other events. And um, listening, I think, is probably a good one. Um, and like, yeah, like Larry said, not putting all the mental load on the community to answer all your questions, go and do some research. I think Laurie's got some good books. Um, he's going to tell I us do, about. Thank yeah. you for queuing because I was <laughs> about segue. to put one up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's great. So I'm going to hold this up. Uh, hopefully you can all see that. And um, this is a book called The Savvy Ally. Um, and it's written by a lady called Jeannie Gainsberg. And I really like this book. I got it at Vancouver Public Library. I also got this other book, um, uh, which is a really nice book talking about heroes really from the the uh, 2S LGBTQI plus community. Uh, this is a United States focus book, but uh, these are two books I got from uh, the uh, the public library. But this one here in particular, The Savvy Ally, uh, written by an ally for allies, um, is just fantastic. And I was having a flick through it um, earlier uh, this week, and it's got some really interesting, fun facts um, and serious stuff, you know. And and I think. Um, uh, you know, in Jeannie's uh, matter of fact style, you know, um, talking about some of the things you talked about, Ebony, uh, about, um, you know, 
awkward moments or people who are a little bit ignorant and ill-informed. And I really like her style because I think uh, sometimes, you know, meeting that awkwardness or that, you know, ignorance with a certain level of, um, um, you know, a certain level of uh, humour and seriousness combined is a really kind of nice way to sort of break through some of that. And, um, and she gives people good advice about, you know, practical advice about how to actually be an ally, what are the things you might do wrong, if you say something wrong, how to correct it, um, you know, um, but in general, taking that load off uh, the marginalised group, you know, so that's a really good book. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly um, being at events like this is all part of it as well, Mary Jane, um, uh, that's the way you can you can get yourself um, more informed. Um, so uh, any other thoughts? Um, Caden, uh, I want to sort of perhaps talk to you specifically because, you know, we know that the trans community in particular is, uh, you know, attracting more, you know, um, hostility, let's put it that way, more hostility specifically. So, uh, and even within the community, like when Ebony was talking about her standing up for trans people, um, maybe explore that a little bit. Uh, any thoughts? Um, that in particular, I, I think, again, it just comes back to, um, visibility and normalcy and like what people see all the time versus like uh, I think we mentioned this in the in the previous meeting that we had for this is that the more people are exposed the less scary it is because like people are afraid of the unknown yeah and when they see that all the time they feel better about it and to the point of like being a stronger ally like I, I don't know about uh, you Lori or Ebony but I know when I go to a business or I'm like unsure of something, if I'm in a new place, if I go in, um, especially where it's like, you're getting a service, like either it's like, you know, your dentist or a haircut or whatever. And the, um, the business has like a little pride flag in the window. Like, I don't know about you, but that makes me feel so much better immediately. Um, so like at work in particular for a manager or whatever, if they have even something that has, something like that, like a sticker, that's the rainbow flag or the ally flag is also good. Uh, when I was at work, I actually had uh, this mug um, that I had all the time and I brought it to like all of my meetings. Um, and again, this is at a mine site in the middle of BC. Um, and one, not one did anybody comment on it. And two, <laughs> it, it, it was just, it was blatant. Like I was there with all of our operators like in a meeting <laughs> drinking this on calls, like it didn't matter. And uh, <laughs> just little things like that. You don't have to comment, but it's present. And I think that really helps, honestly. It, it lets people know that you know what's up. And honestly, from there, you can talk. You know what's up. I love it. And I love the cup. Um, and while no one commented, uh, I know they noticed. We all know they noticed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. But again, I transitioned at work. That wasn't a secret. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's true too. But yeah, anyway, yeah, but that's kind of nice, you know. Um, and thank you for sharing that. Um, and and I think uh, just to sort of reinforce, um, that within our community we've got work to do to be allies to all of our community. Um, and uh, you know, we talked about trans people. I also want to sort of probably say uh, a little bit about um, um, bisexual men who are very invisible in the mining industry and probably in society in general. Uh, there are a few, I guess, uh, high-profile bisexual. Uh, men in, in society more generally, but in engineering and mining, I'm struggling to name one. I know a handful of gay men. Um, so for example, Sam Houston, who used to work with Jacobs, I don't know if you know Sam, uh, Lucy, but um, Sam is, uh, you know, quite a prolific public speaker and he uh, actually um, uh, moderated the Women in Mining um, uh, event at SME this year because um, Sam's an, uh, a strong ally for women in mining and um, it did a good job at that. Um, and uh, Bob Quartermain, who's uh, you know the former CEO of Predium, and Bob uh, put together a video uh, for the CIM convention panel that we spoke about where Caden and I met, um, and that was particularly focused on um, the uh, restrictions and the human rights aspects uh, around the world and uh, quite well-informed video that he um, prepared. So there are a handful of gay men, but very few bisexual men. And uh, I think, um, uh, you know, that remains a challenge for us as well. Um, so um, I think um, I want to just go back very quickly to um, the photos and then we'll just see, we're, we're really heading into question uh, time here a little bit. Um, and I'll see if I can get my screen share to work quickly. Um, 
and I did manage to get a couple more of your photos in uh, as we were talking. Uh, so there, there, Caden, um, uh, a couple of those fun photos. Uh, which, which one was this middle one from? Is that Edinburgh? Uh, yeah, actually, all three of those are on the left. That's not Montreal. Those all three were from Edinburgh. Yeah, wonderful. Okay. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I want to just uh, share this uh, photo, which is from a mine site in northern BC. And um, uh, like I uh, got to this mine site. I've been there several times and we're lining up to get checked into the camp and I'm going, oh, my effing God. Um, you know, there's a huge pride flag and not just any pride flag. You can see the Chevron, which is, you know, uh, the, the one that represents, you know, most aspects of our diversity. And I'm going this is unbelievable. I would never have seen this when I started my career. Um, and, uh, and there's me with a cheesy grin. Um, this was a real moment for me. This is in 2022. And uh, I think it is a sort of a sign of how far we've come in the mining industry in recent years. And certainly I've seen on LinkedIn, the big mining companies, the likes of Newmont, Alcoa, BHP, Rio Tinto, Valet, et cetera, have been quite open and public and sharing profiles of people in our community um, that are quite personal. Um, and uh, I really, you know, have noticed that. Um, uh, so really good to see. Um, any any other thoughts about, um, you know, the mining industry specifically or engineering? Um, uh, you know, I think, Caden, you've talked about your experience of transitioning uh, in a very sort of public way at a mine site. Um, I think, uh, Lucy, you talked a little bit about, um, you know, one of your gay male friends who, you know, tentatively uh, came out and, and, and survived coming out in, in mining. Ebony, you talked about your experience, but um, do, do any of you have any, any sort of words around, you know, being part of our community, being open in, in mining, or perhaps for those that are not yet uh, fully open, but perhaps, um, you know, how we can support them? Any, any thoughts? Just, just hold that thought and we'll go to Q&A yeah. <laughs> uh, because I realise we're running out of time. Uh, Katie, any, any other questions? No other questions in the chat. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to flip to resources while people are thinking. Um, so, you know, for some people, this is still a huge deal. I think there are people who are in the closet. I was speaking with a colleague in uh, infrastructure recently uh, and she knows there's many people who are like particularly uh, bi men, gay men in her company, but they're really like absolutely not ready to come out. Um, and in other cases, you know, I think uh, we, we know that there are challenges in our community with substance use, with suicide and, and so forth. There's very serious aspects there. Um, so at times, you know, people may need to get help or, you know, they may want to um, support others who are struggling you know, with where to get help. So there are services like this. Um, so it, it gets better. Canada.org has, um, you know, help for a whole range of uh, aspects, but including uh, sexuality related aspects. So there, there's a few here. So trans life, P flag, uh, youth related uh, um, uh, uh, organization, Project Youth Affirm, and then the uh, Canadian Centre for Gender and Sexual Diversity. And then also um, this. Um, um, this was shared by one of my panelists last year, which was just uh, just one accepting adult can save an LGBTQ young person's life. Um, so when we think about suicide, um, and this is relating to the Trevor Project, um, we think about suicide for young people that are questioning their identity and so forth. I mean, this is a you know absolute tragedy um, if people you know don't feel that they can get help or don't have anyone to talk to. So just one person can make all the difference. So I wanted to share that. Um, and um, just uh, come back to the panelists if you had any uh, any any final thoughts about um, you know um, the mining industry, what we can do to change. Apart from all the wonderful stuff all three of you are doing, I've been so inspired by listening to you all, all, all three of you today. Uh, but any any final thoughts on that? I think for me, you know, we're seeing we're seeing good growth and, and trajectory yep. you know we, we're, we've seen uh, you know really good targets and um goals from different mining companies around women and then we're also seeing it now with indigenous folks and and now we're seeing also lgbtq suicide plus um metrics and things too and and that's great it's a great step forward it's a way to really help organizations do that and 
And then it just needs everybody also um, staying curious, staying um, inquisitive and you know, just supporting all of our different folks, whether they are within the, the minority groups that we've just spoken about or marginalized groups or others as well. You know, there's um, there's a lot going on for different people. And um, yeah, we just need to keep having the conversation. If you can wear a, a pride you know, sticker, lapel, pin, uh, whatever you want to call it on a shirt for the month um, and just have those conversations, the cadence point, you know, the, the sigh of relief of, you know, the physical weight of people's shoulders when you see that. Um, we, we haven't touched on pronouns, but it's also another one where just, and we didn't do it today. Um, mm -hmm. actually I, I've realized, but you know, even just introducing yourself using your pronouns is a really great sign for others to be like, okay, great. This is an inclusive space where it's okay. If my pronouns maybe don't aren't what, um, you know, might be expected. So those are just those little bits and, um, yeah, and just symbols that we can all do to help everyone. And hopefully uh, we'll just keep seeing that trajectory get better and better with visibility and representation. Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Ebony. And I realised also that um, I didn't start with my pronouns. And then, um, of course, uh, you get everyone else to do it. And then I didn't sort of set the scene. So I apologise, my pronouns are he, him. And, um, and it does make a difference. We do this at a running club and um, uh, some people are resistant to it. I don't really understand why, but we have people show up from time to time that don't use the binary pronouns that, you know, people particularly, you know, traditionally, um, you know, expect and, and it does make a difference. So um, thank you for that. Um, uh, Caden, do you have any final words? Yeah, I just really wanted to say thank you uh, sorry, so Kay much. Sorry, Caden. Oh, so sorry. Saying, <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> and then we'll go to Caden. <laughs> yeah, mostly it's... Um it's more like a, a hope, a wish that yes. uh, for people within the community itself, like, especially if you're in a country that's so supportive, of course, yeah. um, or a company to, you know, to, to be brave. And it, even if you don't want to be out, maybe just to like not hide it anymore. Cause that takes a lot of energy too. Yes. And yes. just to let it go. And, and like, it, it, it does take bravery, but like once, once you do that, it's, it's easier. Yeah. Thank you so much for saying that. I think uh, certainly coming out is a courageous act and I think uh, it's a, it's a journey. So I think what you just said there really nicely summed it up because even that sort of letting go and not hiding it is part of that journey and it takes courage and it mm -hmm. certainly takes the weight off. I, I know that from personal experience because um, you know, when I was trying to lie about my identity, I mean, I'm not a very good liar and it's, it's hard work and it's, it's, it's soul destroying, to be honest. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and very quickly, Lucy, and then we'll go to Katie. Uh, yeah, I would just say, um, I guess for allies to be open to having conversations and open to listening and, and be as supportive as you can, uh, whatever the conversation is, wherever people are up to. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Um, thank you all so much. I think it's been absolutely amazing. So we'll go to Katie to close it off. Yeah, no, I thank you all so much. I, it, it was this, this hour has been one of the more impactful hours uh, that I've spent this year. Um, this has definitely been super helpful for me as an ally. Um, it's, it's really important for all of us to look inward. Um, you know, I think someone mentioned, you know, you can't possibly be supportive of others if you don't know who you are and aren't secure with yourself. And I, I, I very much identified with that. And I realized that one of the issues I've had as an ally and, and meant it really, I wasn't really an ally was, I, uh, I feared people that if I supported pride groups and outwardly, you know, wore a pride pin as an example, um, that people would think I was a lesbian. And then 
I started to think about it and I'm like, well, well, why do I care about that? Like, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. So it like, it made me have to get really real with, with what I thought and, and why I was thinking those things. And so with, with that, one of the things that I'm going to do with pride is get myself a pride pin and wear it. Um, and yeah, I think, I think, um, I, the other thing, uh, I just wanted to note is, you know, I really appreciate the, the ways, the tangible tips that you guys gave in how to make people feel safe, um, in a conversation, um, because I think that's, you know, psychological safety is super important, uh, when it comes to, to these types of, conversations and just being willing to to talk about you know the really hard parts of 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 what you're dealing with and and potentially who you are and um i think we can all relate to that uh on some level and so so thank you all so very very much uh for sharing your experiences i think it's been um yeah incredibly insightful i think uh that we could continue this conversation for for days probably um but uh we'll we'll cut that here thank you Lori, for for moderating this great conversation thank you guys for preparing it was really really wonderful um so again uh check in on the linkedin cim diac page i think it's diac diac cim um make sure you're liking it following it uh for all of our latest happenings there's webinars happening all the time so Thank you all for joining us today and have a great day. Thanks so much, Katie. Okay. Thanks everyone. Okay. Happy pride. Thank you. Bye.